Thanks, Lynn, and good afternoon, everyone. I'm Carol Butler. I'm Assistant Director for Collections here at the museum. When Lynn first asked me to speak about collections, I thought the challenge of doing so in six minutes was a little bit like trying to anticipate what the answer would be to the question, what's the purpose of God, the universe, and everything? And I think some of you may know the answer is 42, so maybe we'll see the answer 42 somewhere in these six minutes. The museum's collections have their origins in items acquired during the U.S. Exploring Expedition, also known as the Wilkes Expedition of the 1840s. Other early collections include botanical specimens from the Department of Agriculture and the boxcar full of natural history specimens from our own Spencer Fullerton Baird. But I'm not going to focus so much on the past or that big number that is 140 blah 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 million because I don't think that's what's really important about the collections. I want us to turn our thinking towards what the 21st century means for our collections. As a whole, natural history's collections are broad, representative, old, new, delicate, robust, perfect, marked by use and time, created by humans and the product of human imagination, formed by natural processes, modified, unmodified, earth-based, and cosmic, incredibly diverse, and complemented by a wealth of other resources that are in themselves collections. And they are huge at a scale that's hard to imagine and impossible to manage without 21st century approaches including moving from a specimen-based level way of thinking to a collections level way of thinking. One of the most influential projects we've undertaken here at the museum is the assessment of the collections to enable prioritization and ensure that the collections are appropriate for our mission and that they're ready to use to meet the mission. These graphs show our early high-level findings that quickly revealed that we'd been doing a good job of managing the physical condition of most of the collections, but needed to do more on the informational status of the collections. The x-axis on this graph shows measures of importance, um, and the y-axis shows measures of condition or information. And this clustering, to me, shows that most of the dots, and each dot represents what we were defining in 2008 as a collection across the millions here at the museum, that most of those dots were clustering at a rank five, which is the optimal rank. But a few could be called out in the condition graph, and those were uh, frozen mammal tissues and small whales. And those red dots showed that those were collections that we deemed important, but that we assessed at not being in the best condition, commensurate with their importance. Conversely, on the other side, with information, you can see that there are two red dots for neuropteroid types and echinoderm types that are very important as their type collections and, appropriately, in a very good state relative to their information full records in EMU, well managed. But the array of these dots showed me and many others across the museum that the information picture wasn't as positive as the condition picture was. We've developed this assessment tool further and this example from invertebrate zoology shows how we're tracking the trends in collections improvements. You can see some migration of more yellow dots from the graph to the left towards uh, the upper right-hand corner, which is optimal for both condition relative to significance or importance. So you see more of a clustering up there that uh, the assessment numbers show that our conditions are improving. But now we're using another way of visualizing the data to, to help us hone in on uh, priorities and have some very credible data to support our proposals. 
Um, on the right-hand side of the graph, you see a lot of dots in that very desirable quadrant that shows the specimens that are very important according to the department's uh, assessment are those that are in really good condition, but we have some that aren't as important but are still in good condition, so you kind of wonder what's, what's going on there. Do we need additional action? You see a couple of dots in the lower left-hand corner that suggest not as important and not in as good a condition, so maybe that's not where we focus, but the dot that the blue arrow is pointing to is an important collection that's not in great condition. And guess which one that was? The parasite collection, new to the museum, and our assessment of it said, yes, this collection needs the uh, attention and the support that we felt impressionistically it needed, and then the dots confirmed it. So managing collections with 21st century thinking means addressing big topics and uh, developing commensurate plans. And these plans have improved, have resulted in some instances in improved cabinetry, rehousing projects, digitization projects that help us leverage our expect expertise and speed the process of making collections data accessible. They're also helping us to revisit the important questions of what we have and why we have it. But all this system's work is for a purpose. We intend to use the collections, and use them we do. We see these metrics about results, and then there are more examples than we can count, such as the study of this parasitic wasp as it relates to the management of the brown marmorated stink bug or the use of collections to identify impacts by invasive species such as the Burmese python whose stomach was opened up to show what kind of bird it was eating. This python is now invasive in Florida. Or the work of visitors who are examining fishing technologies used by their ancestors that offer a sustainable approach to catching fish of the right size now that their community has regained access to traditional fishing grounds or the work of a visiting scholar who is looking at marine mammal skeletal material to identify isotopic signatures of diets among certain taxa to understand how those diets might be changing as food sources change along with climate change. So what can we expect with collections as we move forward in this 21st century? We can expect continuity and continuing to use our strengths. We can expect informatics. We are in the age of big data and we must engage with our information in hand to participate in the scholarship of today and tomorrow. And we can expect collaboration around important topics such as changes in the Arctic as museums band together to use their data in a collaborative way to answer big questions. It's an exciting time for collections. I'm here because I grew up playing outside and loving the natural world and uh, sort of embracing it fully by getting poison ivy and getting dirty. I'm also here because of an experience when I was 17 when I was an exchange student in Turkey and uh, became passionately interested in understanding other groups of people who lived in ways differently than I was raised. And I'm here because I fell in love with the discipline of anthropology because for me it was the discipline where you didn't have to give up anything you loved and you could go to great parties. And I'm here at this museum because I thought if I could not find a way to contribute in this museum and have a job here, I probably was not gonna going to make it. And fortunately, in 1988, somebody gave me a chance. I began here as a one-year uh, temporary GS5 inventory technician inventorying physical anthropology collections and gained an appreciation for tidiness, orderliness, accessibility, and thoughtful processes in collections management. 